Hi everyone, it's your boy, Zach, and that sound you hear behind is uh, my radiator. So, um, this is a, a thread I saw on Twitter yesterday from a friend of mine. I actually knew him from my old uh, Twitter account, and he's also started up a YouTube uh, channel. So, uh, I asked him if I could make a video on this, and he said yes. So, um, uh, here we go. It's a 27-step thread on how to fix Marvel Comics. So step one, treat all of the iconic and popular Marvel heroes with the respect they deserve. No more comas, deaths, downgrades, and turning into fascists. I can't really think of who's in a coma. Who's in a coma? Oh, Tony Stark was in a coma. Like, well, like a pseudo coma. Um, but yeah, Tony Stark, uh, coma, death, Wolverine, downgrade, I would call Spider-Man a downgrade. Just, just he just got nerfed in respect and, and importance in the uh, universe. And then turning into fascist is obviously Squirrel Girl. Um, no, 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 Ms. Marvel. Uh, number two, stop creators from acting like assholes on social media. If they can't behave themselves, put a muzzle on it. That thing with Max Bemis, uh, yesterday I did a, a video about it. I, it actually kind of ruined my day. I'm uh, I'm really tired of having uh, invested myself in a fandom and a, uh, a company and its characters for my entire life just for five years ago, a bunch of mostly childless weirdos to decide, let's just say, start saying to the fans, uh, F off and eat our ass and screw you and you're a Nazi. And it happens over and over and over again. I can't think of one store where uh, an employee one company where an employee can talk like that to customers and not get fired except for marvel you could work at the freaking piggly wiggly and in your free time during your vacation say something like that and as soon as it gets back to your freaking manager you are fired um number three retcon one more <coughs> day from peter parker's history no more deal with mephisto fully restores marriage also takes dan slot off of his book so one more day is, it was kind of like the uh, eat my ass of Joe Quesada. <laughs> the, well, I know Max Bemis said feast on my ass. But anyway, Joe Quesada had a, a good run. He kind of righted the ship when Marvel was having some problems. And then supposedly because Quesada was going through a divorce and Dan Slott, I apparently has never been in a relationship. They were, they felt very uncomfortable having the at the time still flagship character of uh peter parker being a marriage so they got him out of a marriage in the uh, worst way possible he made a deal with the devil to keep his elderly aunt alive for a little while longer meanwhile he has to lose his marriage and the kid he would have had with her i i just i don't know it sounds so much worse when you say it out loud uh, Matt Invicta says, hire lots of young, fresh talent, but for the following reasons only. Merit, merit, merit. So there's been two kinds of bad young, fresh talent uh, hires. There's been people like, um, uh, well, Mags Visaggio isn't young. Actually, Gabby Rivera isn't that young either. <laughs> but they kind of portray as if they're young. Um, they hire them because of their sexuality or their gender status or... Blizzard. I still can't believe they haven't hired Kwanzer. He is so obviously, I think because he used to work at Marvel, so they don't get to say, we just hired a fresh, young African-American. It's like, you know, you just rehired him uh, in a different position. But, um, so you have uh, people who are young, uh, Kate Leff, that uh, are obviously untalented, but hired because of gender, race, sexuality, whatever. But then you have people who actually have talent, Erica Henderson, but who are allowed to purposefully draw lower than their abilities. Completely insane. Uh, number five, be a bit, bit less lenient about keeping books in print. If it sells less than 30000 and doesn't have amazing critical acclaim, cancel it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just for literally paying the rent on their Manhattan office, they probably can't afford to do that right now. But you could definitely set up 20000 20 Below 20000 is absolutely pathetic. And that's a good, oh, geez, three-fifths of their line? Yeah, probably two-fifths. 
Uh, number six, for God's sake, stop ruining the X-Men. Put your best available writers on those books and have them tell amazing stories. Normal mutant hate. So X-Men is a weird one. Um, uh, Marvel doesn't have the movie rights to the X-Men or TV or any of that stuff. So like three years ago, they decided, screw the X-Men. The Inhumans are just as good and just have just as much potential. And we've seen from the multiple failed series and the horribly received TV show that was originally supposed to be a movie. It's not true. The humans are okay guest stars every now and then. The X-Men are the franchise. And uh, ruining a, a franchise that is, you know, important to the whole universe is just silly. Number seven, don't preach about the value of diversity and then make your company an echo chamber with zero diversity of thought. Commit to intellectual diversity. So this one's the obvious one. Uh, Republicans. <laughs> there are no Republicans at Marvel. Um uh, back in the day, you had uh, Mike Barron and uh, Chuck Dixon writing extremely popular runs on The Punisher. That they still used the bits from their runs in the TV shows and the movies and in the comics. Um, those things were huge, and they were both, you know, dyed-in-the-wool Republicans. Uh, there is, you know, uh, Trump uh, lost you know, the popular vote by a couple million, but he didn't lose it by all the millions. Like, he still got 60 million uh, plus voters republicans are still like a hundred million uh it, but it's it, it's not just the point of uh, my representation it's the point that the echo chamber you literally get the same point of view it's boring you get the same take on life anytime you see a, a, a story with refugees you know what it's going to be they're the poor victims and uh the americans are the evil ones anyone who doesn't want massive unchecked immigration is evil it's boring um uh, eight, if you're going to put political messages in stories, make them ambiguous, fair to both sides, or at least not so insulting and cringeworthy. Go read Anne Nascenti on Daredevil. She tackled a lot of hot topic, you know, uh, freaking uh, gun control, things like that. She would always, always, always show, uh, you know, animal rights, show people from both sides. And even in one of my earlier videos, I showed this. She, You know, she's very far left. But she would always show both sides as humans. She actually did this thing where she had the uh, pro-animal rights activist and she showed her as being a very selfish, shallow person. Uh, whereas she showed the uh, 1950s housewife as being very caring. It was a very interesting take. Um, commit to hiring better artists. If you're going to charge four bucks for a comic, make sure the consumer is getting their money's worth. And he's showing examples of not ready for prime time uh, artists on major books and then now we're seeing a good one don't hire a really good artist and then give them terrible art direction that makes their uh work subpar i don't really see what's wrong with this page um but uh, maybe it's something that you gotta watch his videos to know what he's talking about restore the iconic avengers cap tony thor to the forefront of the team but make their stories mean something don't turn the avengers into a bland generic book the avengers is so bad and they're doing a crossover with mark wade's other bad team book and nobody cares. It's it's really embarrassing. Uh, the Avengers is the biggest thing at movies, and it's the smallest thing at comics. And they just they just spited, you know, they cut their nose off to spite their face with X Men, and then they have the Avengers, and they don't follow up on it in the comics. Cut back, cut back on events. Uh, have one major event every two years, and an event for a specific character or team in between them. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, Completely abandon the idea of movie synergy. Don't change the comics to match the movies when it should be the other way around. I disagree with that one. I've always said, you know, have a Tony Stark look like Robert Downey Jr. Have him speak with that patois, which they've pretty much um, done. Print lots of female-led books, but treat those characters with seriousness and respect and don't market 90% of them to the Tumblr crowd. One of the weird things about um, uh, Marvel... Uh, pushing diversity and SJW politics is they've also pushed just straight up airhead characters and creators. Uh, Squirrel Girl is an airhead. Uh, Miss Marvel is an airhead. Heather Antos is an airhead. Um, when I was growing up, we had Anne Nascenti. She was like a intellectual, real New Yorker, lefty, um, but she had a brain in her head. She was very, very smart. Even freaking Jim Shooter in the, the interview, I, I was saying she was smart as a whip and the characters were smart. I don't know why they want to say 
they respect women and then they basically say that they have the minds of children. Um, uh, 15. Don't create books, characters with the intention of making clickbait headlines. Iron Man is a 15 year old black girl. Captain America is a Hydra agent. No more of that. Yeah, this is that's it's BuzzFeed. You're, you you turned your company into BuzzFeed. 16. Stop screwing over comic book stores with scams designed to boost sales figures. Stop flooding the shore the stores with shitty events and number ones that no one buys. So that's you know obviously Marvel Legacy, Marvel Generations. Um, Marvel uh, Legacy, the first ones had lenticular covers. You know, you turn them one way, it looks like one thing. Another, it looks like another. And they screwed the comic store owners so bad. Uh, if you wonder why there's so many unsold... So it, obviously it costs more money to make a lenticular cover. But the cover price was the same. Marvel uh, mitigated the extra cost by passing it on to the comic store owners. They said, if you want the lenticulars, which tended to be popular... You had to buy the non-lenticulars. So that's why every lenticular has like 20 to 30 unsold non-lenticulars next to it. Uh, 17, stop making those cringy covers of superheroes taking selfies. It's a minor point, but it's bloody annoying. Absolutely. Uh, 18, reunite the original Young Avengers in a new ongoing. Get some qualified people to write it. Do not fill it with hipster Tumblr cringe. I have never read Young Avengers, but I've, I've consistently heard people say that that might be where SJW Marvel actually started. Because it started out kind of okay. You know, they had like statistically improbable uh, homosexuals. Uh, but they said they had America Chavez. But they said it was good. It was basically, a, a, you know, kind of like a Degrassi High meets a action adventure. And then they say Kieran Gillen got on and just made everything weird and SJW. And that's where things have been going ever since. 19. Give every book you publish a good amount of promotion at first. But if it doesn't sell well, don't shove it down the reader's throats. Absolutely. The idea that America Chavez survived the legacy semi-soft reboot of the company is absolutely ridiculous. When uh, freaking Captain Marvel gets canceled every one and a half years, don't bring her back. We don't want her. We don't want this take on her. Oh, boy. <laughs> then 20. Don't print books starring beloved characters with the intention of pushing some political agenda. The character always comes first. Yeah, that's... That's Captain Marvel right there. They, they're pushing this weird gender politics agenda with her. Bring back to Fantastic Four. This is an important point that should have been at the top of the list. It's just weird. Fantastic Four is basically the birth of the company. Um, again, it, this is because they don't have the movie rights and it's out of spite, but it's stupid. This is a crucial part of Marvel and you just gave it away. Um, don't be afraid to print books with extremely graphic content. Punisher, Ghost Rider, Wolverine, and Luke Cage all deserve a mature audience. Luke Cage sells, sells absolutely horribly. I think by like issue three, it was like at 12 or 10,000. Uh, but back in the day, uh, they had the Marvel Max and they had Luke Cage. You know, he's supposed to be a black exploitation character. It should be like really violent and a lot of sexuality. That's the character. Not pushing his mixed race daughter to sleep or to down to the store in a little baby carriage and the most generic, bland, uh, you know, like, 3D model buildings behind him. No, that's not Luke Cage. So, uh, oh, they got interrupted. 23, don't take popular characters known for being attractive feminine and turn them into this for no good reason. Absolutely. This is absolutely insane. This is BuzzFeed gender politics. Um, 24, replace Tom Brevoort with a new publisher. Keep him on board as a regular editor or some other minor position. I've said this many times. Tom Brevoort is, uh, was good as a basic editor and absolute horror show as an executive editor, basically second in charge, but the, the top face to the uh, public. He's very snide. He's very condescending. He hates the fans. He's uh, infused with SJW politics. He was the key uh, person in hiring the Milkshake crew who are effectively non-qualified diversity hire work girlfriends for uh, the male staff. Um, stop relaunching books every 20 or so issues let characters and teams have long running status quo without immediately shaking things up again right now they're at original numbering um but uh yeah it broke all continuity you, you didn't feel like you owned anything when things were restarting uh every uh, year and a half to two years let the free market decide what comics should be printed once and for all don't make decisions based on pressure from vocal fans or the media again america chavez should have been canceled at issue four um, uh, Luke Cage, when it went down to like ten or twelve thousand on issue three, should have been canceled right away. They keep these books going because they're worried about what 
that Bleeding Cool is going to say it was because of race. No, it's because all you have to do is just print the sales. And don't palm that off on the audience and say, oh, the audience was too racist to buy Luke Cage. Luke Cage is a boring book, and Luke is portrayed as a bland cuck right now. Um, uh, give Doctor Strange a personality. I like the guy, but he needs more depth. He deserves it. Meh, this probably could have been a 26-point list. That one's kind of very nudgy. I, I haven't read Doctor Strange. Um, he Yeah, he clearly had a distinct personality like in the 80s and 90s, and now he's just kind of like generically determined to guy yeah so i can see that but anyway um, i'm gonna wrap this one up tell me what you think about this list tell me what are the biggest points to you um thanks for watching i'll have more videos up later today